Hey everyone, it's Jack from whatculture.com. Here I am for the fast count. And to be honest, it's been one of those weeks again where all the big news has been from outside of WWE. D D WWE hasn't really... Nip Can we get some scandal going, lads, or something? Because, like, you're really, you're really getting beaten down by the independent wrestling scene in terms of news and hot takes. This is, I'm Jack from whatculture.com and this is the Fast Count. Now first let's start off with all of this week's WWE news and first of all, this is news that broke like sometime last week really, but it's still worth a mention because it's just like one of the weirdest, most obviously Vince McMahon things I think I've ever known, ever, in the history of me following wrestling. The next Raw pay-per-view is going to be called Great Balls of Fire. Now, only vi when was that song even released? Let's find out. Let's just have a look. Here we go, Great Balls of Fire, a hit song from 1957. Only Vince McMahon would choose a song 60 years old to, you know, have in his modern day product. I don't understand, but the news here is that that pay-per-view will fit, and apparently it was originally going to be called Bad Blood, but Great Balls of Fire. But apparently, uh, Brock Lesnar will make his first Universal title defense on that show. We don't know who against yet. He's probably not going to lose it either, but hopefully it's a good show. Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Next up, there was a lot of worry uh, regarding X-Pac or Sean Waltman because of his absence. He was booked for an IPW show over in the UK and just never showed. Everyone was worried he was missing. Obviously, he's had struggles with drug abuse in the past and stuff like that. Uh, it turns out he was actually detained at LAX airport for uh, possession of reportedly marijuana and meth as well. Um, he is out on bail. It was apparently a $35,000 bail and he's denied publicly that there was meth in the tablets that he had. He said it was some kind of prescription thing. Um, there's no details on which side of the argument is correct, but just kind of hope that X-Pac's all right, really. Uh, it's always sad to see a wrestler who's had uh, a history of kind of struggles with addiction relapse, but hopefully that's not true. Hopefully he's fine. Uh, hopefully it wasn't meth, I guess. Uh, all the best to Sean Waltman. And finally, news on the card for the upcoming NXT TakeOver Chicago show. That, uh, that card is starting to take place. Uh, the, the women's title match has been confirmed. There was a battle royal on NXT this week to determine who would you know, got to face Asuka for the championship, but Asuka interfered and it all broke down, so instead William Regal has booked a fatal four-way match. Asuka will face Ember Moon, Ruby Riot, and Nikki Cross at the show, and... And I still think she's gonna retain, but what do you think? Let us know. Bobby Roode's NXT Championship will also be on the line. What is that? Ugh. Ugh. Bobby Roode's NXT Championship will also be on the line against one of two competitors. Uh, their match for the number one contendership will be next week on NXT, and those men are Hideo Itami and Roderick Strong. And now it's time for all the wacky news from elsewhere in the world of wrestling, and as I said in the introduction to this video, I'm using my hands a lot, as I said in the introduction to this video, uh, this news is just... It's been a particularly eventful week in the world of uh, independent wrestling, especially over in Japan, but there's one piece of news that we're going to come to first, which concerns uh, the Western wrestling scene, and it could potentially change the entire landscape of the business. What is that? So remember a few months ago when Billy Corgan, the frontman of the Smashing Pumpkins, do you remember when he tried to buy uh, Impact Wrestling and then it all went kind of to sh** for him, and he had a pretty bad time, when everyone was hoping that he'd be able to buy it because he could maybe save it. He seems like more of a sensible businessman than Dixie Carter is a businesswoman. But uh, no, it, it didn't work out. That's all right. He's bought the NWA. He's just gone for the most historic organization in wrestling history. I mean, he's just bought the NWA. That I should point out, not, not, the, uh, not the early 90s West Coast hip hop collective featuring stars such as Easy e Ice Cube, you know, all those guys. No, no, he's bought the, uh, the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance, you know, more like kind of Harley Race, Ric Flair, those sort of guys. There's been very little word yet on what Mr. Corgan's plans are. Uh, with the NWA, but hopefully this means that the NWA Heavyweight Championship will return to prominence because that's one of the most storied belts in the history of wrestling and it's currently around the waist of Tim Storm, a, a sort of 50-year-old Texan wrestler who, I checked his day a bit, he doesn't seem to defend it very often at all. That title's just, it's down in like Texas somewhere. No one knows how to get it back. 
but hopefully Billy Corgan will restore that storied organization to prominence in the wrestling world and hopefully bring that title back into sort of the public eye as well. Straight out of Compton, f the police. Yeah. The rematch of the year has been confirmed for New Japan Pro Wrestling Show Dominion on June 11th. That's right, it's the second clash between Kazuchika Okada and Kenny Omega, who of course put on that six star match back in January at Wrestle Kingdom 11. Understandably, I'm absolutely buzzing for this match. I don't quite see how they're gonna top it. Will, will they even try to top it, or will they try and tell a slightly different story in which pure match quality is sacrificed for sort of nuance, clever storytelling, psychology? I don't know. I really don't know what they're gonna do, but I am very excited. Once again, that is at Dominion, New Japan's June 11th show, Kenny Omega, Kazuchika Okada, Oh. And finally, and another piece of New Japan based news, uh, the competitors for Best of the Super Juniors 2017 have been announced and it includes all the guys you'd probably expect, like Kushida, Will Ospreay was of course last year's champion, you know, all those sort of guys. One very notable debutante, however, is the villain Marty Skrull. We're all very excited to see how Marty does in that tournament. He is of course one of the kind of, I was about to say fastest rising, but he's been prominent for a number of years now. Uh, but he's really expanded his kind of brand into kind of a global sort of sense because like he was one of the hottest figures on the British wrestling scene but then last year he of course won Bowler, PWG's annual tournament, he's wrestled for WCPW of course, he's just been all over the place and now it's really exciting to see him get a chance in Japan as well. And finally it's time for my wrestler of the week and this week's wrestler of the week is none other than, it's not the most original answer and I've already you know, raved about him a lot on this video, but it's Kenny Omega. The reason that Kenny is my wrestler of the week this week is because of his excellent match with Tomohiro Ishii uh, this week in New Japan Wrestling Dontaku. Now, it was a good match, a very good match, but it was just so hard to watch, especially with Shibata's current health concerns and the, that style of wrestling, like hard hitting stuff. Uh, the theme seemed to be who can lariat their opponent so much that they flip over and land on their neck and the back of their head more times. And Kenny did it more times, I guess. No, he won with the one-winged angel, the most protected finisher in wrestling to date. A finisher I strongly suspect will factor heavily into that rematch with Okada because they're going to be like, can Okada avoid, you know, the one-winged angel again? If he gets hit by it, will he kick out? All that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's all for this week on the Fast Count. Kenny Omega could well be the best wrestler in the world. If not, it's probably Okada. But this week it was Kenny Omega. I uh, hope you've enjoyed all the news. We'll see what Billy Corgan does with the NWA. We're, we're very much looking forward to Great Balls of Fire and there's not much more to say. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, I've been Jack from rockculture.com uh, and I'll see you soon. This Friday, the Mexican qualifier of the Pro Wrestling World Cup will be uploaded for free to What Culture Wrestling and it's a night crammed with lucha mayhem and brutal action. On the card are six matches featuring eight of the finest luchadors on planet Earth. The first round matches pit Penta El Zero Miedo against Rey Phoenix, Juventud Guerrero against El Hijo de Dos Caras, Drago against El Liguero, and Rey Mysterio against Alberto El Patron. The winners of those matches will face each other in the semis to determine which two men go on to the World Cup Finals in August. Not only that, but Primate faces off against Scotty Wainwright in a hardcore match. Rampage squares off against the Kiwi buzzsaw Travis Banks. Drew Galloway wrestles his last match on the indie circuit against Cody Rhodes. And finally, new WCPW champion Martin Kirby will be in action and we can confirm the belt will be on the line. The show streams in its entirety and for free on the What Culture Wrestling YouTube channel this Friday at 7pm UK, 2pm Eastern for being uploaded in full to the channel. You do not want to miss this. Okay. Easy E's, Ice Cubes and DOCs, Snoop Dio Double G's, and the group that said mother the police made you a tape of the dope beast to burn when you stroll through in your hood. When your arm sales wasn't doing too good, who's the doctor that told you to go see? Y'all better listen up closely. All you that said that I turned on the y'all are the reason that Dre ain't being getting no sleep. So all all the y'all, if y'all don't love <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out if you want. I thought it would be funny, but it wasn't. <laughs>